Our final speaker for this evening is Dr. Leanne Greaves. Leanne completed her master's degree at McMaster University before going on to complete her PhD at Western University. She joins us again as a postdoctoral researcher at McMaster this fall. She studies animal behavior and communication, specializing on how birds smell and how smell influences their behavior. In her spare time, you can find Leanne being very active, training mixed martial arts, hiking, or bird watching somewhere around the Hamilton area, presumably not all at once. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Leanne Greaves. Thanks so much, everyone, for uh, coming to these presentations today. Um, now that we've learned a little bit about what our fat can do for us and small mammals, um, we've taken a trip to Peru and we've uh, all kind of got a great reminder to get our act together when it comes to fitness. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about dating. So to start, I want to invite everyone to just take a moment to imagine your ideal mate. And while you probably pictured some of the physical characteristics you find attractive, I'm willing to bet that you didn't imagine how your ideal mate should smell. For those of us who want to start a family, it's important that we choose a high quality partner. This is someone who can help provide care for us and our children, who can help us maintain the home, and who can protect us from danger. These characteristics are not only important to us as humans, they're also important to species that raise their children in pairs or groups, and this includes birds. So how do we choose the right partner? We all have a unique body odor, and we can think of this as our own distinct perfume. And it turns out that both humans and animals can use this body odor to choose a good mate. Our body odor is influenced by many different factors. Our diet can affect the way we smell, the amount of stress that we may be under, whether we're healthy or ill can influence our odor, and so can the bacteria and fungi that naturally live on and in our bodies. Our genes can also influence our body odor, and it's these genetic effects on odors that I'll be focusing on today. All fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, including us humans, have a special set of immune genes called the Major Histocompatibility Complex, or MHC for short. These MHC genes make proteins that allow our bodies to recognize and fight off harmful disease-causing pathogens. Here's an example of how this works. The MHC gene region, pictured here, produces MHC proteins. These proteins can recognize and bind harmful pathogens. When our unique MHC proteins recognize a pathogen, it can then be destroyed. So the more genetic diversity we have at MHC, the more different proteins we can make and the more different pathogens we can defend against. This means that genetic diversity at MHC is good, but it also means that when we're ready to start a family, we should choose a partner who is genetically different from us so that our kids will be genetically diverse at MHC as well. Birds, like humans, are more likely to raise a healthy family if their mate is genetically unrelated to them. But how can we tell whether a potential partner is a good genetic match? Our body odor may hold the key. Believe it or not, in the 1990s, researchers convinced a group of women to rate their preferences for the smell of men's t-shirts that had been worn for several days. Importantly, these shirts were all for men who differed in their MHC genotypes. This so-called sweaty t-shirt experiment showed that women preferred the odor of men who were different from themselves at MHC. So I wanted to know whether birds, like humans, prefer the odor of MHC dissimilar potential mates. So I designed my own sweaty t-shirt experiment to test this. I gave birds a choice between the odor of opposite sex conspecifics who were more or less similar to themselves at MHC. So for example, females were given 
odor from a male who was either dissimilar to her at MHC or similar to her at MHC. And males received the same test. They could spend time with odor of an MHC dissimilar female or an odor, uh, an MHC similar female's odor. In both cases, I predicted that birds should spend more time with the odor of an MHC dissimilar potential mate, indicating a preference for that odor. So what did I find? I'm about to show you exactly that, uh, but first I would just like to walk you through uh, the, the information that's going to come up on this figure. So on the horizontal or, uh, sorry, on the vertical axis, I'll show the amount of time that the birds in this experiment spent with each sample for a total of up to 600 seconds or 10 minutes, which was the duration of this experiment. And on the horizontal axis, I will show the amount of time spent with the MHC similar odor sample and the MHC dissimilar odor sample. And these, these data will show as the average response of all birds that participated in the study, both males and females. So what did I find? Both females and males spent significantly more time with the body odor of MHC dissimilar potential mates. So males spent more time with MHC dissimilar female odor compared to the time they spent with MHC similar female odor and females did the same thing. Just like in the human study, these birds seem to prefer the odor of an MHC dissimilar mate. So we know that both birds and humans prefer the scent of a genetically different partner. This can help us ensure that our offspring are healthy and able to fight off harmful pathogens. It turns out that we have quite a lot in common with our feathered friends. Thank you for listening and uh, I look forward to our Q&A at the end of the talk. Hi Leanne, thank you so much uh, for that talk. Um, we just have a question for you. So I know a lot of people who typically do field work um, were unable to do any work because of the pandemic. Um, how has COVID affected your work? Yeah, that's a big question for a lot of folks these days, for sure. Um, I was affected. I was supposed to be doing research on some really cool tropical birds in Puerto Rico right now. Um, but fortunately, I was able to develop a local field research-based project that I was able to complete uh, this fall at the Long Point Bird Observatory. So I'm pretty lucky that I still got to get out into the field. A lot of people were not able to do that, unfortunately. Um, but one challenge that I'm facing now is that uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting into the lab to process my data um, because there's a lot of shipping and supply delays right now. So um, I have to say I've been pretty lucky overall though. The question we have is for Leanne. So how do birds figure out when you put out bird seed? It seems like they're, they're right on it right away. Is that smell as well? That's a fun question, thanks. Um, so birds can definitely use smell to find food. Uh, for example, birds like vultures or seabirds, especially the seabirds that spend uh, often days out on the open ocean, they'll use smell uh, quite heavily um, to find food. But the songbirds, the kind of birds that are usually visiting feeders are more likely to, to rely on their sense of sight to find food. And they can do that in a couple of ways. Um, birds that have a territory will spend some time exploring that territory and then they can uh, actually seek out and memorize the locations of different food sources and they'll visit them frequently. Um, and birds that don't live in the area that might be migrating through can actually use cues of where other birds are going as they travel through um, and sort of go where the birds are going and uh, look for food sources that way. Uh, very interesting to hear about the romantic world of birds. You said that females prefer certain male traits and phenotypes. So the question uh, from one of our audience members is, does smell trump other traits in female sexual selection? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, First, I, I think something that was quite interesting that I um, found in my research was that not only did the females have that preference, but the males did too. And in the birds that I studied, both sexes uh, spend quite a bit of time caring for the young. So it makes sense that both sexes might be engaging in that mate choice process. Um, and somewhat similar to humans, you know, 
we're not only assessing one trait when we choose a mate. We might think about physical appearance, but we're probably also evaluating, you know, maybe the kind of job and hobbies someone has, how they treat their family, and maybe a little bit how they smell. Um, and birds are somewhat similar. They'll also assess multiple traits. So we know absolutely, especially with females, they'll assess the quality of a male's song. Um, males and females can both assess the quality of the plumage or the feathers that um, their potential mates have. And I think that it's quite possible that smell is another component that they are evaluating, but it's probably not the main or the major component, just like that's probably not the main thing that, that we might use uh, either. Thank you so much.